Hey all you cool kittens and crafters. I'm Emily Sue, and welcome to the first ever episode of DIY Not. Today, I'm gonna teach you everything there is to know about window tracing. So window tracing is a technique you can use when you don't have a light box, but you wanna trace another image onto a different sheet of paper. All you need is a window or a glass door, a trusty pencil, very sharp, an eraser, some tape, scotch tape or painter's tape will do, a printout of your choice. This is some cute clip art I found online that was free and a sheet of printer paper or watercolor paper, whichever you prefer. Ready to get started? Let's go. I chose this room for my window tracing because it has this big French door right here and I can easily just flip off the lights and have a lot of light coming in through that French door. Plus I can close this curtain and have an even darker room. I'm gonna start by taking a few pieces of tape. And I'll take my four pieces of tape that I just pulled off and use them to secure my printed image to the window. I did actually blow my image up a little bit. I wanted him to be even bigger, so he'll really fill the page. Now I'll take another four pieces of tape and line up my second sheet of paper over the first. Just like that. Now we're ready to draw. I usually like to start on a focal point such as an eye or even nose. But really, you can kind of start anywhere you like and just begin to trace those shapes that you see right there on the page. This is such a great alternative for anyone who doesn't have a tracing box at home, which are quite expensive and difficult to build if you build your own, though not impossible. Get his cute little fluffy hair. Get his cute little legs. And all that fur. Now it doesn't really matter what order you go in as you trace your photo, as long as you can tell where you've already drawn and where you still need to go. So cute. And you'll notice I'm not really too worried about the thickness of my pencil because that's something I can come in and change with paint later or with markers later. I really just want to get an outline and understand where my drawing is. Now I'm going to do the sushi band. Woo! That's seaweed. Love seaweed. Now I got the rest of his fur there in the back. So cute. And now I get to do this beautiful slab of tuna or salmon or whatever's up there. I can't really tell, but it looks yummy. Oh, one thing I miss in quarantine is going out and getting sushi. Let me tell ya. I'll do the top of that sushi. Oh, man, I'm going so fast. I'm not even that worried about these details. So we're gonna, we're gonna come back in and make them look better. The whole point of this is just to get your picture down. So I'm gonna put those stripes on. So cute. I think we're done. Oh wait, his legs. I gotta get his little legs. Can't forget those. Oh, they're so cute. Yes. Flip the light on. Now you can really see that drawing. And you can see there's definitely a few spots that could use a little help. Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad. I don't know. I like it because uh, his eye's a little crooked, but you know what? I can live with that. Cute, right? I'm just gonna carefully try and remove this drawing. <laughs> I may have taped it up there too well, we'll see. Oh, there he goes. All right, whoops, ripped him a little. That's okay. All right, we got this drawing, I'll take that away. This is a sheet of watercolor paper. It's considerably thicker. And I'm gonna try and trace with the watercolor paper so I can actually paint this. Now we're gonna speed it up a little here. I've switched to a graphite pencil with a softer lead so I can get thicker outlines on this drawing. The softer lead will be easier to erase later before I paint this with watercolor paints. 
The second drawing seems much easier than the first. Once I've pulled my drawing off the wall, it's time to add some color. I've switched back to my drawing on printer paper and moved to a flat tabletop with pencils, eraser, and markers handy to color in my drawing. I made a few corrections with my eraser before outlining the drawing in a softer charcoal pencil to get fatter outlines. You'll notice that I like to turn my page a lot while working, so it meets the natural curves of my hand holding my pencil, marker, paintbrush, or whatever. I find this a much easier way to draw or paint than trying to contort my hand into unnatural or uncomfortable positions. This part of the coloring process is really fun and relaxing to me. I love the way these green marker strokes convey the texture of nori or seaweed. I didn't quite get the pink color pattern of the nigiri the same here as it was in the original sushi pug clip art, but that's okay. Every hand-drawn interpretation of art is unique to the maker. Don't labor over the details. Try to find peace in your meditation while doing the work of putting color where you want it to be. Feel free to erase. Once the ink is dry, you can come back over any section with a darker or lighter color on top, though I definitely recommend saving the black outlines for last. You could do this with any picture you have around your home. If you don't have a printer, you could use a photograph, a logo, a coloring page, a poster, or any other image you can find that will allow enough light to shine through so that you can find some outlines, trace what you see, and color in from there. It's easy. Honestly, this is basically how I learned to draw as a kid, just copying other images. It's an excellent eye-to-hand coordination brain trainer. There we go. One pug down, one more to go. I've set aside my coloring page and switched to my drawing on watercolor paper. I'm going to start by erasing my entire drawing so the charcoal doesn't bleed into my watercolor paint. You may notice that my watercolor palette is a bit unusual. I found these on Amazon a few years ago and I'm completely obsessed with them. They fan out like a paint chip color wheel, plus they each have a little mixing tray and a sponge to dry your brush. They also come with watercolor brush pens that hold the water inside so you just squeeze it out instead of having to have a glass of water on hand. I may have acquired a few of these over time and this is not a paid advertisement by the way. I just love these paints and you can use absolutely any kind of paints you want, dealer's choice. Any hoozies, I started with a pastel color palette for the sweet little pug's tongue and tail and a slice of nigiri on top. Then I switched over to my classic artist color palette for his face, legs, ears, eyebrows, cheeks, and chin. Uh, he is looking really cute. I ended up using more of an emerald green for the nori on the watercolor, which I could have gone back over with a darker green, but I just like that color a lot. And even though it's not nearly as dark as seaweed really is, I still think he looks spiffy. I did use black watercolor paint to fill in the pug's nose and eyes, but I decided to let the paint dry for a bit, then use a black felt tip marker to finish it off, giving it a fun illustrated look. Ugh, isn't he just the cutest? I hope this gave you some inspiration. I've included a link in my video description to where I found this clip art online, but I encourage you to trace absolutely any image you wish. Finally, it's important to sign and date your work. There you have it. Happy tracing, y'all. Wasn't that fun? Thank you so much for watching my video today, and a very special thanks to the Nashville Metro Arts Commission for supporting this project through the Nashville Thrive Grant for Visual Artists. I am so happy to be able to bring you these projects. Can't wait to see what y'all do. Leave comments. Let me know what you chose to draw. Let me know what else you want to see how to make. I can't wait to bring you more content. I'm going to be posting new videos weekly, so check it out. Subscribe. Hit me up. Love y'all. Happy quarantine.